Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You're watching Comic Con Africa 2020. Sorry we had to fade out that video because of time constraints. But uh, don't be upset because next up we have the legendary Jason David Frank. What up, Jason? Hey, what's going on, buddy? All good and you, bro. Hey, it's good to see you again. Sorry, yesterday I had a, I had a show and interviews and we had some uh, local uh, radio spots and news spots up here. So I'm, I'm good to be back. Thank you. Sweet, man. Uh, no, it's very cool chatting to you again. Uh, for the people who missed our first interview, I just want to do a quick recap um, with a couple of those questions I did ask you. And so if you hear some of the stuff that I asked you before, <laughs> just understand. Um, look, I'm a big fan. Like I told you, I literally had posters of you on my wall growing up. Did you, did you ever yeah. think that? Did you ever think that Power Rangers was going to be such a big show? Uh, you know, when I started Power Rangers, I think I was there for the moment. Uh, I'm a type of guy that I feel um, to live in the present. I know people want to live in the future. And, uh, I'm a planner, too. Or don't live in the past. I lived in the moment. So it was kind of hard to think 20 years from now or 25 years from now. Because I, I think that puts, uh, you know, when you do something uh, or you collect a comic book, I collect the comic book and I put it in the paper sleeve. Then I think I wonder what's going to happen 20 years from now with this comic book as an investment. But for myself, I like to invest in the moment. That's why I think um, fans love me is I don't think of tomorrow, although I do have plans. But I'm saying at that time, I was only there for 10, 15 episodes. I didn't think I was going to be the leader. I just did the best I could. And uh, I think with that attitude, uh, without expecting, I became the leader. Right, right. That, and you, you also now a businessman, and um, what's what's that leap like from coming from an entertain, the entertainment world to being a businessman? And I know you're very involved in martial arts. Um, do you still do you feel like it was destined to happen, or was it a big leap? It was destined, but I think everyone. That, that really doesn't know me is I owned my first karate school even the day before I turned 18. Oh, wow. So my mom had to sign off on things. So I was a businessman from day one. But again, it was very, I was very passionate at what I did. I, I think the karate school I grew up in, imagine this. I was walking by as a kid. I looked in the window. I said, man, I want to train there. I started training at Red Dragon Covina. At that karate school, we, there was a lot of locations. I trained at headquarters, and I ended up buying that school and being the boss at 18 years old. So now here I'm a boss at a, at a karate school. Well, I'm, I still have instructor ranks. I mean, I'm talking to boss like me being an entrepreneur at a karate school that I used to train at, and now I own it at 18. So it was a decision where I had to make was, okay, do I continue doing – being a businessman, entrepreneur, and passion of karate of what I love, or do I go to Power Rangers? So I decided to do both. Right. It was one of those things where I decided to, if I if I felt that we were the number one school at that time, and I had a lot of students competing and winning competitions, so I figured if I could reach people through television and get them involved in the martial arts, I felt the world would be a better place. Um, and a lot of kids that are growing up now on tour said, Hey, I became a black belt because of you. And that makes me so happy. So, um, I think business, a lot of people that want to be into business has to find what they're passionate about. Right. Like basketball. How can you become Michael Jordan if you weren't good and you weren't passionate about basketball? Right. You know what I mean? So you have to be good at it and you have to find the passion and you have to be willing. I want to win that game, not win that game because I need to get $10 million. I want to win it for me or like fighters that fight, you know, they're yeah. At, at one point when you're in the game, you can't think about the money. You got to think about winning. So that means that you have to be in the moment, not thinking about other things when you're fighting in the cage, yeah. you know, um, you have to, so I was in the moment, and it was destined. I think everything right now is a blueprint of your life. I mean, this moment, this present moment, I'm in Arkansas right now. I'm uh, heading to Tex Texarkana and then a lot of other places. But this is our time, me and your time, and the fans in South Africa. This is our moment, our present. Right. 
Totally. Did, w was Power Rangers your first audition ever, or you had had your audition before? For other I've things? Uh, other things. I was supposed to do a movie called American Street Fighter, which um, which I was supposed to do. I believe another Power Ranger actor did that role. I'm not too sure, but I was supposed to do American Street Fighter, and then I had just this yogurt commercial. I was a model um, at uh, when I was 12. I did some modeling, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, and then, yeah, but, but I want to, I, it's, it's hard to let people know that there was a lot of process to get this audition. It wasn't like, Oh, I got an audition and booked the number one kid show in the world. You know, I, I, I had long hair before I started the show. Um, I went to an agency and said, Hey, I want you to represent me. And they said, hmm, you need to take your earrings out. You need to cut your hair. You don't really represent an a average teenage kid. Right. So I back a little bit and I said, okay, well, I went to cut my hair, I took my earrings out, and I came back humbly, uh, very shy because I, I feel like I cut my hair, I took my earrings out, I didn't feel like me. So I came back and I said, hey, uh, it's me, you know, I'd like for you to represent me like you said. It was literally like a day or two days later. And he said, no, no, I don't have time. No, no, no. And I said, well, I'm here to audition. You know, I'm here to get a role, I'm here for a representation. Well, they didn't represent me, and so I didn't leave. I said, well... I'd like you to fulfill your promise and fulfill your word. So it was the persistency that got my role. I did not leave until the guy said, uh, okay, here you go. Um, this is, uh, it's, it sounds right up your alley. And it was called Phantoms. And then it was called Power Rangers. And uh, I auditioned for it. Luckily, my role, I pretty much did great on my first audition because of karate. Um, was a national competitor, and at that time, nobody could do what I did in the audition world because every actor said that they, they knew karate. So I went in, auditioned, and it was like instantly they said, great, can you help the girls in the hallway? I said, yeah, sure. I was wondering, do I have a job? Did they hire me? I have no clue what this is. So I went out there and picked a girl. Out of all the girls, I picked Twee. I said, hey, uh, I know she's auditioned. I said, can I help you with the routine? Because she had to go in there and do a routine. They said, Jason, we love all the girls, but we want to see a routine. So most people didn't know what a routine was. I knew it was a kata, a series of moves. People have to follow along. So I taught Twee, and I had Twee do it slow. You know, like go in there with a routine. And, uh, and then she got hired. So me and Twee, the Yellow Ranger, got hired pretty much at the same time. So to answer your question... Yes, it was my first big audition, but it wasn't easy getting. And I tell people out there, you have to try over and over and right. over again. As I did with karate schools, and, and I didn't get things handed to me. It was something that was strategically planned, but also that timing of the blueprint to say, hey, you're going to be the Green Ranger at this moment in time, and then when the moment comes, you're going to be the White Ranger and then when the moment comes, you're going to be the leader. And that's kind of what happened because a lot of people quit. And, um, you know, they said, hey, who's passionate about Power Rangers? And right. Who wants to? Uh, that's a big job. But who that's, wants you to, Jason? Even though it was hard work, but it was your first audition, you get the part and you help somebody else get the part. Yeah. That's yeah, no, amazing. it was good. And it's very hard work. And you have to have hard work ethics. I, I was talking about this yesterday. If you look at the longevity of Rangers, it was me and Dave. I mean, it was the work ethics. It had nothing to do with money. I don't care if they pay you money. This job was tough. Six days a week, 12 to 14 hour days, uh, you know, and you have to be on. No matter what you go through, hit right. your mark, body, and deliver your lines. Meanwhile, a lot of stuff going on in personal lives. But no one sees that, so it's a lot of hard work. So it's really not about money. It's about work ethics. Yeah, I've done 50 cons a year, and no one can keep up with that. Not because of anything else with the money. It's work ethics. It's can you show up? Can you be on time? Can you be dependable? I've just done 22 comic shops that are just like a comic con. 22 comic shops, very social distancing, record numbers, 22 of them. On a, on a motorcycle, over 7,000 miles on a motorcycle that I wow. come, I hear, I have a great time. That's hard work ethics. But also, you have to have the love of what you're doing. If you don't love it, stop. That's what I tell people. 
If they're complaining about their job, well, I hate this job, stop. Fulfill, get another job that you love. So becoming the Green Ranger was the first step of, uh, of the longevity of me being the longest z existing Ranger. I think it has to do with me being a black belt and me having the dedication and work ethics, but also you're your own boss. So how do you want to, you know, how do you want to represent yourself? Right. I want to represent the highest manner possible. And that's why um, I hold myself to those high standards. Like I say, at comic cons, you'll, you'll be surprised when you meet me, you're going to be like, wow, that was super cool. I want this experience for you guys to be an experience for me. If I wanted to meet a celebrity, I try to cover all aspects of it. That's why right. people are like, Sure. Like, do you want to take this picture? Yeah. Let's take a fighting stance. Thank you. You know, because I kind of know what you want. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, it's going to be a good... Definitely. And next year, when we do this again, hopefully we can have you in South Africa. Yeah, well, that's what that's what the plan is. That's what I'm really planning. I mean, I uh, talked to everyone. I talked to Reed Pop as well uh, and uh, told him I'd like to go over there and, you know, just... Roll this thing over. I know it didn't happen this year. Uh, there's there's a, a lot of celebrities that say, okay, cool, I'll do the social the social media thing in place, and I'll do it, but I really want to go there, and I really want to meet you guys. And this is great, temporary, but I think it's a, it's a good hype. It's a temporarily hype, you know? So right. I don't know who's on here or if the same actors are going to the event next year or they're different actors, but you can count me in. Sweet. Would would you have a martial arts class? Like, would you do a martial arts class if you came to South Africa? Even just one? For sure. But I used to do them at uh, Comic-Con's Wizard World. Every show we did, I had a free karate class. That's and awesome. had hundreds of people show up. And then they kind of stopped because it was really, it was a really, uh, it's a draining thing, but I want people that really want to learn. And uh, it was a very awesome class. And then they kind of just stopped it. And then I got so busy. But then in Jakarta, when I was in Jakarta, they said, hey, can you teach a martial arts class? I said, yeah. They said, well, we got thousands of people. I said, trust me. I will teach this class like any other class and everyone will learn. Hundreds of people get together, bow, fighting stance. I mean, I taught on stage in Jakarta this karate class, and I'm happy to teach the first step, the very, I, I mean, I have a lot of curriculum, but I can teach your first step into black belt excellence. And uh, I would love to do that. That's amazing. When you said that, I just pictured the, the Bruce Lee movie into the dragon when he walks up the stairs yeah. and there's just all these students in front of him. Except we have cosplayers in the audience and you know, we got, totally. but I got to tell you, it works. You know, just you can, it works any clothes you have, any cosplay you have, what I can teach you will work effectively and you'll be able to learn the moves. So I kind of strategically pick the moves under the conditions of you might be in cosplay, we might have a little kid, uh, you might be in tight spandex or maybe you're in a heavy jacket. I'll be able to teach you guys certain, these certain moves that you can do in any conditions. And that's kind of what it is that has to do with protecting yourself in the streets. So we don't get a choice what to wear when we're attacked. We don't have to, a choice of wearing an e or a choice of wearing a, a loose, you know, sweater. I mean, you might have, you know, a heavy jacket on where in the street someone's going to grab your jacket and yank. So I'm going to teach some really good street, street self-defense stuff as well as teaching the kids that karate is not used for any other purpose except self-defense. Totally. And have you, have you trained your kids? I, I mean, I train everybody in the martial arts. I think, uh, you know, training, training everyone. I have my instructors train like Jenna and other people because I'm her dad. So it's kind of like, ah, uh, you know, so, yeah. but uh, I encourage everyone, but I don't force it on everyone because you don't want to force martial arts on everyone. You don't want to make your child do it. Although I think it's the best thing for them. But um, again, with, you know, religion, relationships with God, you don't just plow people and tell them you're living wrong, you're sinning, you're doing this, you're doing that. So I free will just you train when you want, but I promise you, when I teach your uh, fans in South Africa, it would be the first step in a black belt excellence. And I promise you, when you get out, you'll be like, oh, I've never thought karate can be this fun. Right. I never thought karate can be so cool. So it's going to be like an introductory class. You'll probably look for your nearest karate school and uh, 
might not be as cool, <laughs> you know, because yeah. it really depends on the but, um, but I'm definitely going to teach you guys, and you probably will seek out your nearest karate school. Totally. Yo, Jason, what's the time? <laughs> it's morphin' time. You know what time it is. <laughs> <It's> so sweet. <laughs> is it, you, you have a lot of, you, you told me the other day, you have lots of fun doing that. Oh, yeah, every time. Every time someone says it's just, it used to be, Never on my mind as much. What time is it? But now so many shows I do and so many fans come up. And uh, a fan the other day did come up and casually, I think, was watching your show. And they casually asked it like you, like, hey, what time is it? And so I didn't know if it was they were really asking in time or what. <laughs> so now I just say, fourth in time. So that's my answer for everything. <laughs> Growing up, did, you, did your kids, did, you, did Jenna know how big her dad was? And how important he was to a whole generation, a couple generations actually, with just your involvement and you being in uh, Power Rangers. Yeah, you know, but there's a different, I think there's a different side of two different worlds. Um, you know, I remember Jenna wanted to, we did a, a tent night. Just, I was like, okay, I'll do a father-daughter tent night. And we built a little tent in the, in the uh, living room. And I had a bunch of movies I showed her that were, you know, kids that were around, this is not a CD, this is but around CDs that I'll give her a choice and say, hey, look, all these movies, which movie do you want to watch? And I kind of put Power Rangers over here to kind of like encourage the dog movie. And she's like, I want to watch that movie. And I was like, oh, what movie? Uh, this cat movie? No, the movie behind. Uh, uh, what movie? The Power Ranger movie? Yeah. So I had to watch Power Rangers with her. But um, <laughs> it's just an everyday thing. It's just, uh, you know, when you get to know me, Honestly, man, you'll just be like, wow, that's super cool. He's uh, Jason, Jason David Frank, JDF, he's just a cool, everyday person. And I think, um, again, that's what I love doing about the shows is I think people come up and they're like, oh, I'm so nervous. I don't know what to say. And I'm like, oh, just relax, man. We're going to – we'll have some fun and I'll engage the conversation. And 60 seconds later, you'll you'll forget that you're talking to Tommy Oliver and uh, you'll be – You'll be relaxed. There's some people that freak out and cry and all that, and I always say happy tears because I want to make sure when people see them, you know, a uh, block away and they're crying, I don't want them to think Jason did something bad or made them cry. So I always right. say happy tears. <laughs> so there's, a little, there's a lot of happy tears and a lot of um, good moving stories. There's just a lot of good stories. Another uh, article came out last night in the on the news that was pretty cool, and it's just uh, it's good to see – um, other people, other countries. And what I like to see is someone who can be an international star, but actually gives back to that country or gives back to that city just because, you know, Power Rangers was around the world. So I try to travel around the world like Jakarta and all these other places to say, thank you, you know, thank right. you, South Africa, Comic Con, for watching the show because you're all, you know, everyone watches it around the world. So I try to travel around and, you know, uh, be, they say international star. I try to be the international Power Ranger to go and give back to everyone, even if the trip is 15 hours, 24 hours. I don't know how long it takes to get there. But uh, it's all worth it because the minute you come off the airplane and you're in a different country and people are like, JDF, Power Rangers, you're like, man, I'm in South Africa and I got so many great fans over here. Or I'm in Brazil or, you know, I'm in Jakarta and it just feels so good for me as a person to step off an airplane anywhere around the world and have people go, dude, I loved your show. Right. That's what makes me feel good. Totally. In America. It's, it's, dude, so I love it. Uh, Jason, before you go, we just have a couple of fan questions. You mind answering? Yeah. Do it. Sweet. Oh, Kelly asked, if you weren't a Power Ranger, would you have found your way into the UFC? I probably would have. I was thinking that the other day. It's so funny. Normally, I, I don't ask, ask the what if. It's kind of like, eh, what if you weren't? I'm like, yeah, well, you know, what if, what if, what if? But truthfully, that would have been that way. Uh, it just took a different path. All my friends are in UFC. Uh, I love fighting. I have so many uh, sparring uh you know, uh, stories like with Jose Canseco, the baseball player, if you all know him, to uh, to celebrities, to regular things. So, yeah, for sure, for sure. And that that's a question I could say, honestly, that if I didn't spend my time doing this, I would have been 
into UFC and training. But at the same time, uh, you know, training becomes a lonely world because if I fight, I won't talk to anyone for six months. I just, I can't. Mentally, I'll disappear from the whole world. I will train. I will give it my best because if you do a fight, I really like men, people that are men to step up and say, you know, I lost that fight fair. Right. You know, oh, I only had two weeks and I did really good, but I lost the fight or won the fight. I truthfully want to be, you know, say, hey, that was a fair fight. So I would disappear. And um, I don't think it would be a good thing for me because I really like people. Uh, I like interaction. <laughs> it's good for mental health. Right. We have one more question for you, Jason. Yep. Okay, Steve asked, if you were going into a fight and you could only choose one weapon, what would it be? Probably nunchucks. Nunchucks. Because I... I, I used to compete double nunchucks was my weapon i'm really good at nunchucks nunchucks are uh you know a, a weapon that people don't know how to use them and you have to know how to use nunchucks in order to defend yourself so i would probably pick nunchucks but this is a question for you guys in this in the uh, comic-con south africa i see behind you i see the kfc logo right right Kentucky yeah. fried chicken Sorry. Now, do you know what sean ashton who sean ashton is I'm um, not too sure. But Lord Kings and Ruby, Rudy and Sean Ashton, you know, he's, he's, he's big out there. But uh, he was, uh, he was the uh, Colonel Sanders chicken for – he's a friend of mine. Oh, okay. And he got me – actually, Sean Ashton, I'm sure people that are watching know. He, I just know him as Sean. He, Rudy and Lord of the Rings and uh, – uh, anyway, but uh, he's a friend of mine and actually inspired me to continue writing my poetry. So uh, – one one commercial he did, he, Rudy, the movie Rudy, uh, he was con uh, Colonel, uh, he was the Kentucky Fried Chicken Colonel in it. And uh, he wrote me a, an 8x10 that I saved. That'll probably be in a museum one day because I'm collecting all my stuff, Power Ranger stuff. But uh, he said, your poetry is finger licking, finger licking good. And uh, <laughs> I know Colonel Sanders was pretty awesome. So that was the only – I know him that, that he's got all these other things, and the only thing I, I wanted he gave me was exactly that, the KFC. So a big shout-out to KFC and uh, Sean Ashton for being the uh, the uh, con, uh, Kentucky – or the Colonel Chicken. So <laughs> Thanks so much, dude. You're welcome, dude. Yo. And uh, what, I really hope to see you guys. Um, sorry for all this stuff, but I'm sure glad you guys are doing what you're doing to at least fulfill the fans' hunger for your Comic-Con South Africa. When I saw and heard about it, I was like, yes, I'm there because I want to see your country. I want to meet the people, and you guys have so much passion, so you can count on me next year to show up for you guys if you all want. Oh, sweet. Only if. All right. I'm happy, man. Oh, man. Thank you so much, Dave. Can't wait to see you, dude. Thank you, man. And you guys can follow me on the JDF FFN, which is Instagram, my YouTube the JDFFFN Facebook, which is coming back, Jason David Frank official fan page. Uh, and you can check out all my poetry at the JDF Spoken Truth. If we have issues, and I know we all do, come to my page and we can, we can resolve them. Sweet. Thank you so much, Jason. Uh, buddy, thank you, guys. All right, sweet, bro. Bye, Look after yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, there was JDF Jason David Frank. Yo, we're going we're gonna to be back with another interview. But before that, Here's a little word from our sponsor.